Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on quantizing MIDI note events in Logic Pro 9. Uh, this video is part of a two-part series on quantizing in Logic. Uh, in the last video, we went over event-based quantizing, which all happens down in the Piano Roll Editor. And today we'll be going over region-based quantizing, which is where you can select a region and then quantize all of the events in that region to the same value. I highly recommend you watch part one before watching part two uh, so you don't get lost. Uh, we went over a lot of the basic uh, quantizing parameters and values in that video. All right. So in order to quantize by the region, well, I have to have a region, and there it is. So let's, uh, let me play a little bit of that for you. All right, it sounds for the most part like it's uh, pretty close to being in time, but if we double click on the region, uh, we can see otherwise that we've got a lot of notes that are uh, kind of pretty far off the grid. The other thing we need to do is determine what the, s the shortest rhythmic value is. Uh, looks like we have an eighth note, and I can tell that because each of these uh, larger notches in the grid, those are all quarter notes, um, and we have the uh, grid divided into sixteenth notes. So both of these notes here both look like eighth notes, like they need to be equally spaced over this beat here. Um, so these are both eighth notes. Um, all right, so in order to quantize to the eighth note, what we have to do is click on the region, and let's go up in the inspector area here. And by the way, you can hide or show this by clicking inspector. You may have an icon with an eye on it. I'm in... I guess the abbreviated toolbar mode, so I'd only just see words instead of icons. And we have two sec uh, two uh, drop-down menus up here. We have a uh, pop piano and Yamaha Grand. Yours might say something else. Um, and what the bottom one is is it, is it refers to all the parameters of the track. So if I have a track selected, we can change its icon, change its uh, MIDI channel, transpose it, uh, adjust the velocity. We're not going to use this one today. Uh, we are going to use this uh, upper menu here that says Yamaha Grand Piano on it. And this refers to the MIDI region that we have selected. So if I deselect it, you notice it just says MIDI through. If we select a MIDI region, we'll notice that it shares the same name with whatever region we've selected. So there's a few options here. We can quantize it. Uh, we can apply swing. We can loop it. We can transpose it, add rhythmic delay, adjust the velocity, all this good stuff. But uh, today we're only going to be dealing with quantize, cue swing, and some of the advanced quantization uh, features. We can also quantize to velocity and note length, but again, because we're only dealing with rhythmic correction here, uh, we're only going to be dealing with Q strength, Q range, Q flam, quantize, and Q swing today. All right, so just like our uh, menu in the piano roll, this quantize menu up here has all of the uh, rhythmic values that the piano roll option did as well. So I'm going to choose eighth note. And now my recording should be locked in to the eighth note. Let's take a look in our piano roll editor down here. Now the only problem with that is being perfectly locked into time, it doesn't have a very uh, human character to it. It's very robotic sounding. So uh, the way we can get around that is to use this advanced quantization feature here called Q strength. Now, one thing I have to uh, make you aware of is that all of the advanced quanti quantization features, in order to use them, you have to choose a quantize value up here first. So, what Q strength does is it adjusts how much or how little quantization we're going to have. So, if I have this, uh, if this is blank like this, it means we have 100% quantization. If I click and drag down, you notice that I'll get values lower than 100%. So as I pull down, it's pulling the notes further away from their intended target. So if I pull down to zero, it means that we have no quantization whatsoever. So I'm going to pull up to something like, uh, say, like 60s in the 60 range here. There we go. And let me just show you in the piano roll editor. You notice that some of the notes, whoops, some of the notes are not perfectly locked into place. Again, they're, they're pretty much on the grid, but they're maybe a little bit off, you know, a little bit behind or a little bit ahead of the beat. And that's okay. That just gives us a more human 
uh, feeling, a human characteristic to the recording. Because again, as humans, as musicians, we are not perfect. We're not always perfectly on the bar, perfectly on the, uh, the correct division. So this will pick up some of the the subtle nuances of a, of a real a real audio recording as opposed to a MIDI recording uh, by doing it this way. Now we do have a couple other options over here. We have the Q range and Q flam as well. Uh, I'm going to set my Q strength back up to 100 just for example's sake. Uh, what Q flam or Q range is? When you click on this, it gives us a value, a, ryth- a rhythmic value, either positive or negative. If you choose a, a, a positive value such as 164th, what this means is that it's going to quantize all notes that were within 164th note away from its intended target. So the Q range is a way to include certain notes that are really close to their intended target, but exclude ones that are for, too far away. We can also do this, uh, you know, inversely. So we can choose a oops. We can choose a negative rhythmic value, something like negative 164. And this has the opposite effect. Instead of including all notes uh, in the quantization that were you know, within 164th note away from their quantization point, uh, it excludes all notes that were within that uh, range. Um, so again, positive value, if the note was within a 64th note away, it quantizes it, leaves everything else alone. Negative value... And anything that was with, or excuse me, outside of a 64th note will be quantized. Anything within a 64th note won't be quantized. So let me just uh, show you an example of that. So we'll do a positive value here. So we can see that this note was quantized, but this one wasn't. That probably means that this note was within a 64th note off to begin with. This one was not. This one was more than a 64th note off to begin with. And likewise, we can do a negative value, and it should look just the exact opposite. Yep, there we go. This top note was uh, within the 64th note and was not cl- included. The bottom note here was outside of a 64th note away from its intended target and therefore was quantized. That one, um, I, I don't use it much, but I do use it if I have like a piano roll um, and a piano roll technique is basically something just like this. Let me arm this and play it for you. As opposed to just striking a chord, you can do it like this. And a lot of times you don't want the quantization to include the roll. You can quantize it and make it uh, not include the roll as part of the quantization. It's because because if, you, if you quantize something like this, it's going to turn into something like this. It's going to lock it to the grid, which we may not want. All right, and the last parameter down here we're going to go over is the Q flam. Now, Q flam is really cool. This allows us to create uh, arpeggios, and um, if I, it, it basically allows us to create arpeggios out of just plain old struck struck chords. So, if I play a couple chords here. There we go. I'm going to quantize to the whole note since I played one chord per whole note. Um, and we have two options here. We can either arpeggiate upward or arpeggiate downward. Uh, under the Q flam menu, we either get a positive or negative rhythmic value, just like we did under Q range. So if I choose, uh, say, something like eighth note, it's going to upwardly arpeggiate uh, those chords that I played. So we end up with something like this. And so forth. And if we do it the exact opposite, if we choose a negative uh, rhythmic value, it's going to create a downward arpeggio by the eighth note. And we get something like this. Again, extremely helpful if maybe you're not a good keyboard player. You can just play in the chords, and then you can have the software uh, quantize arpeggio them for you. 
Now, the very last feature I want to go over uh, with you is uh, the Q swing option up here. Um, this works a little differently from the uh, the swing quantize uh, values that we went over in the last video, 8A, 8B, 8C, and so forth. Um, what we can do is I'm just going to play in a, a, just a basic C major scale in eighth notes. So I wasn't really locked into time. I kind of played eighth notes. I click on it, quantize it by the eighth note. Now we're locked into time. But maybe I want to transform this into swung eighth notes as opposed to, um, you know, straight eighth notes. So what I can do is I can drag up or down on this Q swing. And right now, it, when it's blank, it means 50% swing. 50% swing means no swing. It means straight eighth notes. If you pull it up, it's going to go above 50. And if you remember from my last video, I said that uh, the 8E uh, e option in the quantize menu went perfect 66% swing. So we're going to get this sort of an effect with it. So as we pull the cue swing up, it pulls that second eighth note a little bit further away from the first eighth note. You can go all the way up to 100% here, um, although it doesn't, or 99%, I suppose, but it doesn't uh, necessarily sound, uh, sound very good because the second note's almost basically almost overlapping uh, the next note in, in the sequence. Um, so, but we can create harder swings, you know, if you want a little harder swing instead of the 66, maybe you want a 75% swing. Uh, likewise, if we pull down below 50, we get what's called a reversed swing. So if I try something like a 33% swing, instead of pulling the second eighth note further away from the first eighth note, it actually pushes that second eighth note closer to the first eighth note, and we get something like this. Again, if you want to create more of like a kind of a galloping uh, reversed swing sound. And again, just remember that 0% or, well, 1% if you drag it all the way down is not no swing. No swing is 50%. You drag it all the way up, the menu disappears. So when the menu disappears, we get our standard uh, straight eighth note sound back. All right, and again, just to review, um, in order for Q swing to work, you have to choose a quantized parameter up here before Q swing will work. The same thing goes uh, for all of our advanced quantization features, our Q strength, our Q range, and Q flam. You have to pick a quantization uh, value first. If you don't, it, none of the advanced quantization uh, parameters will even work. So that's all the uh, time I have for today. Um, there's also an option in the quantize menu called make groove template, uh, it differs a little bit from the piano roll quantization. Uh, I'll make a video on that in the future. Um, also I'll go over audio quantizing with flex time, uh, in a later video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks.